do is specify formatting. So these are just some examples of like a HTML list or maybe a, li a, a unstructured content, which is just doing an image with maybe body text or <coughs> snippet. Here's a table. And you can even use other um, tools like open layers or something that basically will export it and put it into a map. That gives you an idea. And then you're choosing the display. So I showed you already that block display. The block display will be exposed in structure views, oh, sorry, structure blocks that you can um, place on your site in regions. And page display will show up at whatever um, path you specify. So let's just go and use the wizard to uh, make a special, make a special view now. Butching, okay. So, I'm going to go to my structure, views, and add a new view. And I'm going to give you this uh, uh, Drupal Camp. I'm going to call it Drupal Camp View. Good practice is to actually add a description, and I'll show you where that shows up. And this is where you choose your base table. Um, as you add in different contributed modules, they will actually expose different entities to you as well. So it's nice to check um, what's available there. And we're going to show of type, uh, we're going to show courses, and we're going to create a page. And I can actually not only put in a path there, if I had some type of hierarchy, I could do like course, course list, for example. And I'm going to show it unformatted list teasers. You do have some options here, though. You can do grid, HTML list, jump menu, etc. But if we choose fields here, um, we'll have to go and click continue to edit to get more, more options. So this is, this is the basic uh, view out of the box. Let's save it now just to see where we're at. And click this path. Woohoo, sorry. Click this here, view page. Click view page to view page. So here's our Drupal Camp view. We've simply got a list of titles coming up, and they link to that. So next, we'll go in, and I can add a field. And just to prove the point I said before, that um, the only information available right now is stuff that's related to the content type. So for example, I can get the content author user ID but I can't get anything else about the author. This is not a user view. Remember, this is the content type view. So if we want to do that, this is sort of like the ninja thing. I don't know really why it's just hidden so. It is hidden so. But if we wanted to add a relationship here, um, you could use, basically, if you were going to write this query yourself, you'd do the join <coughs> statement, and you'd say, oh, join this table to that table. So what we're going to do is search up the user we're going to relate content based on the author name. And let's see what difference is now. So if I go back to my fields list, and I go back to author, instead of having my oh, order. I'm doing this right. Maybe I'm actually ahead of myself. Hold on a second. I think I missed a step. <laughs> Let me go back. Uh, I think I have to show you that in a second because I'm also panicking and pressed for time. Oh my god. Okay. I'll show you that in a second. I've got better I've got a better demonstration of this. So let's also think about the um, the various uh, different types of displays and views. So here we go. Back back to this here. You see how we have the page, for example? What we want to next add is a block. Um, we can keep the same display options, and down here you'll be able to see what's coming out in this block. Um, once we save it, you'll go to Structure, Blocks, and on the, un sorry, the disabled section you'll see this view is available, and we'll put it into the sidebar. <coughs> Sidebar here. <coughs> Hello. Stay in there. Um, and now at least we have uh, two views. 
But we won't stop there. Um, what we're actually going to do as well is, for example, we can add in a views attachment. And what a views attachment allows you to do is to create, for example, actually this slide shows it best. To create, for example, say you want a list, a uh, list of articles, and then you want to show a list of the rest of the articles, and just show four of them at the bottom. So you only want to three at the top and four at the bottom. This would be your main page display, and then you'd add a views attachment and say, show me ten items and offset by three, or whatever the count of your main page display was. Um, so that's what uh, views attachments are. Um, so. I'm just gonna go sort of skip ahead. Okay. So another thing you can do is uh, is actually relate content with contextual filters. So um, let's consider that we're looking at somebody's user profile, and you you want to see not only what they've their bio or information, you want to see actually what they've created. So what you'll have is some information about them, such as their user and then their user ID. And what Drupal can do is use that as an example um, to, to decide what to display. So say, for example, you're using an article with the term Asia. You want to show other content related to Asia. So you can use that then as a, as a contextual filter, which I could show you. So. Ah, oh my god, okay, <coughs> like nine minutes here. I'm going to redo this all as a screencast, so you can just ditch this video because it started we started like 15 minutes in or something like that I don't know <laughs> I'll redo it it's so I'm like um, oh let me just show you another one so cake decorating there were no there were no cake there were no related recipes in this case so let's see so let's edit the view let's say we want to change that and have a message at least um, of what to display so here we see what contextual filters being pulled in uh, we're going to pull in, providing a default value, we're going to select, um, actually, it actually says it's good for related taxonomy blocks, and you're going to limit by a specific vocabulary. We're looking for via, meal, like lunch and dinner or dessert. And here you can actually specify, um, well, do it to the title. I'm actually kind of blowing this presentation completely. Oh, great, it's fantastic. <laughs> so, hmm. I'm just gonna see what I can do in the last seven minutes. Um, this is where I was actually gonna do the demo. Do, 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 do. Um, I'm gonna talk about extending views very quickly because it's, it's important to know. Uh, there are a lot of modules that <coughs> that relate to views, you can go to the modules listing and find them. For example, like I said, calendar module actually gives you a list of default templates that you can override. And there's lots of jQuery related modules such as slideshow. Um, and the next, the, I suppose the last thing, the last two things I want to cover is theming views. <laughs> I hope this is useful for you guys, holy shit. Um, <laughs> what you're probably expecting when you're theming views is that you mock up your perfect design comps, you configure and build a site, you drape over the theme and everything's happy. The problem is with theming is that um, you're going to have to do a lot of back and forth uh, with configuration. And if you go down the path of wanting to be a markup megalomaniac and you're, you're going down the mothership route with uh, theming, you're going to find a, a world of pain trying to actually get the perfect markup out of your Drupal site. It's actually better to consider that uh, Drupal's outputting very classy, lots of class-rich uh, markup uh, that you can control with CSS. So it's better to think of like a skeleton and skin model where you're actually using your CSS for the visual design and con using configuration to modify the markup. So I'm going to give you an example of, um, of a recent comment view. So let's go back to views. Um, the nice thing is with uh, views, you'll have a bunch of uh, templates here that are, that are available for you to enable. And these just come out of the box, and you can then override actually how they display. So let's find it again. Okay. So I'm going to edit this here and show you that you're not stuck with the with the output that's here. If you don't like um, if you don't like the way it looks, 
you can change and customize the field HTML. You can actually change what, what actual markup's being used there. So you've saved yourself editing that. Um, and the other thing is, you can actually rewrite the results of the field as well. And I think that, you know, this is something that is missed a lot. Um, I saw on a client site they were using jQuery in the header of the view to rewrite the output of the view with jQuery, because they knew jQuery, but they didn't know how to use views. So this kind of thing can, can save you a lot of bother. You could, for example, uh, say if, um, let's say you had a, a, a field that was color, you could use that in your, you could rewrite your results and you could use um, the tags available to you. And you could rewrite and say, okay, here's the comment subject, and then you could use color as a, as a class, for example. So that is when you add it. I'm just going to show you as well. You add the field. Whether well, something's approved, here we go. And to give you a better idea, Oops. I can just basically choose. Well, I think I've shown you enough of that, actually. You could, for example, use the status as as a class. And so you could say, okay, whether things are approved, they can show green or not. So literally just take this and go, uh, <laughs> maybe you don't want to use Ben. I don't know what you're use. And then Kaya, for example. So Um, and then you're going to end up having title displaying twice. So what you'd actually do is um, you can then take a specific, a specific title and, or specific field and actually exclude from display. So you can use fields that you don't display to, to change your markup. Hope that's clear. Um, so let's see then. Uh, the other things you can do as well is um, and change the format settings. You can go into a lot of detail with, uh, with the markup as well. Um, as I showed you with individual fields, it's the same thing with the actual output markup. Um, three minutes, okay. So for example, here's the recent comments views. Just to show an anatomy of the view, this is the title field. This is the actual, the blue dot shows the row and the whole red part shows the, the actual view. And if you keep this in your mind, it makes theming views a lot easier. So here, if, if you looked at views markup, I don't want anyone to freak out. Um, you know, some people are <laughs> worrying about the amount of uh, dividers here. But um, this is the field. This controls the label. This is the row wrapper and the element. Um, and so these individual templates are available to you. Um, if you go to, um, we've already looked at this, actually. Uh, modifying the format, adding the classes, stripping markup, um, making fields in line, etc. And I'll show you those. If you go to your views <coughs> module folder, you'll be able to see all the templates that are available to you. There's a kind of a dizzying array of them. So if you keep that map in your mind that these views templates relate uh, to those different sections, it's a little bit easier to understand. But you don't need to know this off the top of your head. You can simply go down to the theme information section and it will generate a list of not only the possible default, or sorry, the default ones, but all the possible permutations. And the more specific, uh, the more specific templates will be chosen uh, first, and they'll default to the to the to the general ones. So, for example, here we are in the page theming information. You can get the table uh, template there. And once you've done that, you can actually uh, copy that file and rename it. I'll just show you here. You can actually copy that file, for example, and then rename it and paste it into your template. Once you rescan for the template files, you'll actually see that this is the one, the old one is the one that's actually being used and not the default one. So let's talk about covering your ass uh, with backup and export. So it's very dangerous. Obviously, you're thinking, oh, I'm editing views on a live site. That's definitely not good. Be OK if it's your own hobby site, you back up. But uh, letting someone else edit a view it could end up with your precious views ruined. So a quick and dirty way to do it would simply be to export and import the view. And when you export that, this is literally what you get. You can simply paste the views code in there. That's a nice thing to do if you're going to try something tricky. Because once you've made a change and saved it, 
you know, the view is, the view is overridden. The problem is that obviously it's going to get pretty <coughs> tedious and boring, so what you want to do is, is export that code to a module. So if you're brand new to Drupal and you're not a developer, um, you may be thinking like, oh, I've never made a module before. There's actually a good tutorial here um, about using views code, um, but it's missing a few things for the beginner, so I've just added some notes here. You need uh, to create a module, it's just an info file and module file. And your info file is quite simple, it's literally these four lines. Um, your delicious Drupal module, on the other hand, has a, you can copy this from his, from his site. Oh, I've made an error here. That has to actually be delicious, <laughs> delicious Drupal or the name of your module. Um, and so what you'll end up with after following his tutorial is a Drupal info file, this simple module file, and your views exported. When you go to your module system, you'll be able to uh, enable your module. Then you clear views cache. And um, the main changes in your workflow now is that you're working now on a staging site. Let's say you have your views developed on a staging site. Your colleague is going to be able to edit the view, do uh, save changes, and you'll be able to um, export again. And the good thing is now a revert option is available. So I'm just going to show you this on the live site. With a normal view, with a normal view, 